Hello you lot, Miller Corner here and welcome back once again to the ER5. That's right, as I promised recently, we are going to be very much cracking on with this project gradually over the weekends, heading into the winter without taking this little beast off the road. And today's focus is going to be the headlight. Now at first glance, there's nothing really wrong with it. It works, it lights stuff up, what more can you ask? But it's not really in keeping with my theme for this bike. For a start, it's got the chrome bezel on it and those big chrome arms coming off of it and that doesn't really fit with my theme of get rid of as much chrome as possible. So instead, I've bought this. Not a box, there is in fact a light in it. A brand new black bezeled headlight which most importantly has got some really hard to peel off cellophane. This is about the same size as a standard ER5 headlight, as you can see, but it comes with black metal brackets to hold it on. It's fully black bodied. I don't know if you can see here, it's got indicators that are LED built into the side of the headlight bezel itself, which is gonna be a little bit more slick than having these big chunky things flapping around on the edges of the bars. So we're getting that one off, getting this one on, and then we're gonna enjoy a cup of tea. Right, I'm ready to go, let's do this. Now, one benefit of having taken the headlight off once before when we did the clocks is that I pretty much know how this comes off. And I know that you have to start by not covering the camera lens while you're undoing these two screws, which means that now lifts off, that comes away. And now we need a spanner and a ratchet to undo these two nuts in here. Okay, 13 mil spanner, for those of you playing along at home, 13 mil socket on a ratchet and because it's been out once before it's not as tight as it could be which is good because it means I don't have to spend four hours with WD-40 swearing at it. I'd like to draw your attention at this point to how many washers are on here. We've got two on this side, two here and one either side built into this. They really don't want this to rattle or move, do they? With both sides unbolted, I can then carefully remove the headlight itself to get more access. Okay, that worked. The new headlight uses the same H4 connection as the original, which means it plugs straight in. Ah, hey, holy crap, it actually works. That's it, job done. We'll just leave it like that. We're finished, that's it. Thanks for watching, have a good one, bye. You might be able to see the bird's nest of wiring in here, which you've got to try and get through a hole in the back of the headlight casing that's about half the size it needs to be. That, I don't know, actually know what that does. I think that's power to the light or something. This, I don't actually know what the hell that does. Wrestling the bird's nest of wires out of the headlight casing proves to be rather easier said than done. Grant me access. No, I've just pushed it more on now. Get out. Ah, no, ow. Yay, there we go. The horn wire is going through here, hooks round underneath and goes through the bloody headlight body. Why would you do that, Kawasaki? Why? Yes. Old headlight body, be gone. Okay, so now the old headlight body is out, we need to get these brackets out of the way. First, the LED indicators have to come off. With the nuts undone, the insulation tape is peeled off the wiring and the chocolate block connectors removed. Don't lose this bit of wiring because this is the bit that connects up to the loom that tells the indicators to turn on. So you need that bit. I'm gonna spare you having to watch me undo the other indicator. So join me when I've done that. See you soon. Right, indicators are off, and now we need to undo these two brackets that held the old light on. Now we've got two nuts under here, which are 10 mil, and the fact I've managed to find a 10 mil makes this a win in itself. The fact they somehow aren't absolutely rusted to buggery and seem to undo without any persuasion whatsoever makes this probably the best day of my life. With the two lower bolts undone, the bracket readily comes off. Come on. I can't overstress this. Come off! Twisting. Twisting. Off! Farewell. Now, the new one, because it's a universal fit, comes with these cool little metal doodads. There's a word you haven't heard in a while. And the way it works is, you hook it round the forks like that, and there's three little different size holes in the back for this bracket to clip into. So you slot it into the different one to make the total size of this collar appropriate to how thick your shaft is. 
Ahem. Put it just down the bottom of where the fork kind of compresses there, so we've got a good kind of level ground to go from. And this actually works best on the middle hole, I've found. The brackets clip together and the supplied nut and bolt done up to secure it to the fork. Because it's worth bearing in mind, it doesn't have to be totally rock bustingly tight because time you've got another one there holding it on with the headlight in the middle to centralize it, this ain't going anywhere and it certainly isn't going to rattle around that much. Now both brackets are fitted, the headlight back can be slotted between the two and then bolted in place with surprisingly good fitment for a universal item. That, I'm not going to quibble over that, that is a pretty bloody good fitment out of the box. You don't want to go absolutely rock bustingly tight with these because you're screwing into plastic, don't forget, so tight but not, oh my good god, you're never coming out of anything ever type. I think, ladies and gentlemen, that housing is now on. Right, next it's time to get the indicators sorted. And because the bike already had those LED indicators on it when I bought the bike, it's already got a higher resistance relay in it so they don't flash too quickly. And now I just need to check what's the positive and the negative before we wire the new ones in. The easy way to do that is just click the ignition on, put the right hand indicator on, and then we need this power light, slightly crappy one, but it does work. Get an earth on the frame of the bike and just check, and you might be able to see there, it flashes, which means that is the positive one, and that's the one we need to get some power from. And now we've got that, we're gonna be using bullet connectors, because on the new headlight, you might have seen, if you've been paying very close attention, it's already got male bullet connectors on it. So we're gonna be using female connectors to complete that connection. So we've got our female bullet connector here, and I'm just going to get the wiring inserted into it. Right, so that is, we're starting with our negative one, which is now inserted deeply in to our bullet connector. And you won't be able to see this on the camera, but I can just see the wiring poking through, so I know that's in there. Then we need our crimpers, and we're gonna need the one millimeter one right on the end. Just grab hold of it like that, and give it a good old squeeze, just to mush it into place. And another one about there. And once you've done that, just give the wire a little bit of a tug on the terminal, make sure that ain't coming out anytime soon, then do the same with the positive one. Just to give him a good old hug, let him know we love him and we want him to stay. So once the connectors are crimped on and looking and feeling pretty solid, we wanna make sure there's not gonna be any liquid getting in there, water or anything else. And to do that, we've just got some electrical tape to seal it up. And you don't need much, but just enough to make sure the disaster will be averted. Negative on the headlight is black, which connects to the black and yellow wire on the Kawasaki. Meanwhile, the green positive on the bike gets joined to the red headlight positive. With the ignition switched on to give it power. Oh yes. Right hand indicator works with a little LED strip and that looks freaking awesome. So good. Now the reason why we are not plugging in this yellow wire for either indicator is because this is actually a bit too modern for the Kawasaki because what the yellow wire on these actually does is designed for if your bike triggers the indicators under hard braking. An immediate example I can think of with that is the new Honda Fireblade. In fact, if you brake really, really hard, like a lot of cars are starting to do these days, you brake really hard and it triggers the hazards to warn someone that you're stopping potentially for something like an emergency. We don't need that because the Kawasaki doesn't do that. So we're gonna take the yellow wire off of this pretty much entirely and then cover the lovely sheathing that comes on it to cover up what's left of it. Farewell, you are no longer needed. And here's what happens if you let both horn wires touch while you're fiddling with the headlight. Because I might well, oh sh the wiring then gets fed into the headlight housing and everything plugged in for good. The two halves are clipped and screwed together and... That is looking awesome. Ha ha! The horn gets remounted and plugged back in before a quick test. Oh, uh, hang on. Remember when I let both horn wires touch? Well, that popped the fuse. Replace it with a brand new one and... Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> And there we have it, an awesome new headlight installed on the Kawasaki, getting rid of that horrible rusting old chrome from the original headlight and adding with it some rather nice LED turn signals into the headlight cluster itself. This is a really simple, cheap and easy mod to do to your bike that even if you've got no knowledge of electronics whatsoever, which, um, guilty as charged, you can do and be really proud of the fact that it massively improves the look of your bike. Next week's episode is another mod on the ER5 and something that needed changing before it went badly wrong. That's all to come though, but for now, thanks very much for watching everybody and have a brilliant rest of your day. Catch you soon and have a good one.